So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Harriet. And Harriet is status post right total knee replacement and is being educated on descending stairs safely prior to discharge. The patient is currently using a single point cane and will have a railing on the left when descending stairs at home. Which of the following instructions is the most appropriate for this patient? So we have A, advance the left arm and unaffected extremity first, then the affected extremity and cane last. B, is advance the left arm and cane first, then the affected extremity followed by the unaffected extremity. All right, C is advance the left arm and the affected extremity first, then the cane followed by the unaffected extremity. And D is advance the cane and the unaffected extremity first, then the left arm followed by the affected extremity. Listen, if y'all... <laughs> if y'all are on the road with me right now, listen to this. Y'all gonna have to pull off on the side for you running to a stop sign or something. Don't run over nobody. Don't pass the stop sign to get a ticket. Pull off to the side of the road and listen to this, all right? Because that was quite a bit. All right, let's go ahead and start knocking this down. So again, we have Harriet. She status post right total knee replacement. All right, that's pretty straightforward, right? This is one of the most common types of surgeries of the lower extremity, especially when it comes to outpatient PT. You need to be ready for it for your MPTE, no doubt. All right, now it says that she is being educated on descending stairs safely prior to discharge. Okay, cool. Descending stairs, we know that that's a role of ours to be able to educate our patients appropriately. Now, the patient is currently using a single point cane, which is cool. At least it's not a walker. A walker tends to be a little bit more difficult when you're in educating the patient on descending stairs. But we just got a single point cane. All right. Now, she is going to have a railing on the left when she's descending stairs. Now, let's slow up for a minute. We got to make sense of this whole thing. Remember, she has a right total knee replacement. Typically... When our patient's just ambulating, we keep the cane on the opposite side, right? We keep the, so we would have the cane in the right hand. I mean, the left hand, I'm sorry, in the left hand. Now, here's the deal. When she's descending the stairs, she has the railing on the left. So we can't put the cane over there. So that lets us know that, okay, so she's going to be using the railing with the left hand, and she's going to keep the cane in the right. Okay. We still got to understand, like, how is she really going to be going down the stairs, though? What's going to be the procedure? And th that's where we lead into the question stem where it says, which of the following instructions is the most appropriate for this patient? Now, in order for you to get this question right, what do you have to understand? All right, well, understanding what hand the cane goes into, all that good stuff. But we already established that piece. Now we need to know, well, does the right leg or the affected leg go down first or is it the unaffected leg that goes down first the cane that's the decisions that we need to make as a pt right now so that leaves us with our answer choices now a i'm gonna go through these one by one because i know some people are on the road right now we're gonna go through them one by one and then knock them out that way all right so a says advance the left arm and upper extremity unaffected extremity first, then the affected extremity and cane last. Let me repeat that again. Advance the left arm and unaffected extremity first, then the affected extremity and cane last. Now, here's the deal. What have y'all learned in PT school now? Didn't y'all all learn that uh, up with the good, down with the bad? I mean, that's one of the most common type of sayings that you ever hear in PT school. It's so freaking cliche the amount of times that you hear it. God damn it. All right. So here's the deal. Advance the left arm and the unaffected extremity first. Well, we wouldn't do that when we're having a patient descend the stairs, right? We wouldn't have the patient go down with the good leg. We're supposed to be going down with the affected leg. 
All right. And so already I don't like A. It just doesn't make sense. All right. Now, here's the deal. Before we move on to the other answer, I want to make something clear. Because we all have learned up with the good, down with the bad. I know that when I came through PT school, I didn't understand anything beyond that statement. I just memorized that saying, up with the good, down with the bad. And that's what I used to tell my patients, too. Up with the good, down with the bad. And the patient just follows that and whatever. You know, nobody ever asks why. Nobody ever truly ever understands why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. All right. And so you need to understand that the one thing that you never want to do is leave a weak leg by itself. You never want to leave a weak leg by itself to where you are putting all the weight on that leg and now the leg has to descend. All right. Or the leg has to 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 maintain all of the weight on it as you're descending the steps. What am I really saying? What am I really saying right now? I'm saying that, well, if that leg, the affected one, had to carry all the weight and slowly lower you down to the next step, I mean, don't you think that the patient's at high risk for falls in that situation? We would never want to do that. Placing all the weight on that leg and making the affected leg go through all that stress. It's just not, we wouldn't want to do that. All right, so that's the reason why we always go down with the affected leg first. Down with the affected leg first. All right, so let's go into B. B says advance the left arm, cool, and the cane first, then the affected extremity, and then the unaffected extremity. Mm. See, I like this one a lot, and the reason being is that, okay, we're advancing the left arm and the cane first, so we're getting that stability in place. And now we're going to start to bring down the affected extremity and then the unaffected extremity. That makes perfect sense. I do not want my affected extremity to be the one that's holding all the weight and lowering my body weight down onto the step. I do not want that. All right. And so B right now is an amazing answer. I love it. This is exactly what I would tell my patient. But that doesn't mean that that's the right answer. Let's continue down the line. It says advance the left arm and the affected extremity first. Then the cane followed by the unaffected extremity. Hmm. All right. Advance the left arm and the affected extremity first. Well, I like this because you are going down with the affected extremity. You are going down with the the leg that has the knee replacement. I like that going first. But here's the deal. It says then then bring down the cane afterwards. And so you don't want to do that either. You don't want the cane to be left behind. The cane is a part of the support. All right. And so we need to have that cane in place before we bring the affected leg down the step. It needs to be in place. And so I don't like C. Part of it is true. But part of it is not at the same time. It's just not the most effective. It's not the most safe for the patient. All right, so let's go ahead and eliminate C for now. D says, advance the cane and the unaffected extremity first, then the left arm followed by the affected extremity. Now, I want you all to think about that for a moment, and you go ahead and eliminate why do you think that D wouldn't be right? It says advance the cane and the unex- unaffected extremity first. Well, we already said that we never want the good leg to go down first. The good leg needs to be responsible for slowly lowering the weight down. We need that leg to stay behind. All right. And so D cannot possibly be the answer. The best answer right now is B. And that's where we advance the left arm and the cane first. Get that stability there. All right. Then we're going to bring down the affected extremity followed by the unaffected extremity. All right. So you need to remember the whole up with the good, down with the bad. You need to remember that. That is true. But we also have to understand the principles that are here, the foundation that we never want to leave a uh, limb that has a knee replacement, a hip replacement, any type of weakness. We don't want to leave that behind and put all of our body weight on that leg. 
All right. You have to remember that the quadriceps are primarily responsible for slowly lowering down the body weight to the next step. If that leg is weak, we do not want that to be the leg that's lowering us down. Does that make sense? I mean, that is a really important point. And if you ever have a patient in the clinic on clinical rotations and, you know, you're telling them up with the good, down with the bad, it's a great opportunity, not just for the MPTE, but it's a great opportunity for you to tell them why are we going down with the affected extremity first? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? That way, if they ever forget the little saying that you told them, they know that, oh, I don't want to put all my body weight on this leg because it's weak and that will cause me to fall. All right. That's how we make a freaking significant difference in not just our understanding, but our patient's understanding as well.